Erev Tovim, good evening, everyone. We are in the Zerah Shimshon on Parshas B'Shalach. We are going to look at Os Ches, section 8 in the Sefer. That's on Daf Tuf Reish Lamid. And before we start this section, uh, we're going to take a look at a Pasuk from the Parsha, from Parshas B'Shalach. Uh, this is Perak Yud Dalid, Pasuk Lamid Aleph. And the Pasuk, this is the, the Pasuk that immediately precedes the uh, Az Yashir, the Shiras Hayam, that uh, B'nai Yisrael, that Moshe leads B'nai Yisrael in singing and praising Hashem uh, right after Kriyas Yamsuf, right after the splitting of the Yamsuf. And the Pasuk right before that says, Vayar Yisrael es Hayod HaGedola, and the Jewish people saw, B'nai Yisrael saw the great hand or the great might, Asher Osa Hashem B'Mitzrayim, that Hashem used against Egypt. Vayiru ha'ames Hashem, and the people uh, feared Hashem. Vayaaminu ba Hashem, and they trusted, they believed and trusted in Hashem. Uve Moshe avdo, and in Moshe his servant. So on that pasuk, that's the pasuk that the Zer Shimshon is going to talk about in Os Ches. Uh, our our uh, learning this evening, uh, please have in mind for a refuah shlema the name Mandy Esther. Bar Elka Rochel, Mandy Esther Bar Elka Rochel. She's uh, undergoing chemotherapy and is critically ill. So please have uh, her name in mind for a refuah shlim. So the Zera Shimshon uh, says, Medrash Yalkut, uh, the, the Yalkut Shimoni, the Medrash of the Yalkut Shimoni quotes our Pusik, Vaya Aminu Bahashem Uva Moshe Avdo. The Jewish people believed in Hashem and in Moshe, his servant. So the Yaakov comments, Im b'Moshe he'aminu, if they believed in Moshe, if B'nai Yisrael believed in Moshe, kal v'chomer b'Hashem, then certainly they believed in Hashem. And we'll talk about in a few moments exactly how a kal v'chomer operates, what that is exactly. But if they believed in Moshe, then certainly they trusted in Hashem. Uma Talmud Lomar b'Moshe. So what is the Torah teaching us specifically by mentioning that the people believed and trusted in Moshe? And the Yalkut Shimoni answers, Lelam Decha to teach you, Shekol HaMa'amin Beroe Yisrael, that anyone who believes in the leaders, Roe literally means shepherd, the shepherds of B'nai Yisrael. Moshe is referred to as the shepherd uh, in the sense of the leader, the protector, the guide of B'nai Yisrael. So the Yalkut Shimoni says anyone who believes and the leaders and protectors of, and trust in the leaders and protectors of Klai Yisrael, when these leaders are like Moshe Rabbeinu, ke'ilu ha'min b'misha amar v'hoyo ha'olam. It is as if, it can be compared as if to the fact that they believe in the one who said the world should come into existence. And of course, that's Hashem. Ad kan l'shono, until here is a quote from the Yalkut Shimoni. So it's a small little comment from the Yalkut Shimoni. And, and on the simplest level, what it appears to be saying is that the Torah uh, went out of its way, so to speak, to mention that B'nai Yisrael believed in Hashem and Moshe in order to make a kind of comparison or equivalency to teach us that people who believe in Moshe and his time and in the future leaders that came after Moshe, who were the faithful shepherds and, and leaders of B'nai Yisrael, people who trust in those leaders, that's a sign, that's a way of demonstrating that they also believe and trust in Hashem. That's the basic point of this uh, piece. But as we'll see right now, the Zerif Shimshon is going to raise a question, not just his own question, a question that he says many people have. Makshim ha'olam, the whole world asks the question on this Yalkut Shimon. The Hoyolo Lomar, because it should have said, Ma Talmud Lomar Hashem. It, the Yalkut Shimoni should have said, what is the Torah coming to teach us when it specifically mentioned that the people trusted and believed in Hashem? The Lo Talmud Lomar B'Moshe. The Yalkut Shimoni should not have said, what is the Torah coming to teach us when it mentions that they trusted and believed in, in Moshe? Shehare ha'emuna b'Hashem osyo mikal v'chomer de Moshe. The belief in Hashem, the fact that the people believed in Hashem that we could uh, deduce from this logic, logical kalvachomer, this logical principle called kalvachomer, which again we'll explain in, in a moment. Uve Moshe itzterich legufe, and the word that, and the fact, and the word, and the pasuk that the people believed in Moshe, Bnei Yisrael believed and trusted in Moshe, 
itzterich, that is needed legufe for itself, meaning the whole point that the Yalkut Shimoni appeared to be making was that the Torah could have told us, could have taught us that the people trusted and believed in Moshe, and that's it, didn't, didn't have to mention Hashem. And we could have logically figured out if they believed in Moshe, then certainly they trusted and believed in Hashem, the creator of the universe, the creator of the world. And so therefore, which word seems to be unnecessary, which word seems to be uh, superfluous in the pasuk, word Hashem, the fact that the people believed in Hashem, that we could have figured out if the pasuk had only told us that they believed in Moshe. But the Zer Shimshon says, everyone's bothered by the fact that the Yalkut Shimoni doesn't say it. The Yalkut Shimoni says, the, to- the word Moshe seems to be extra, and the Torah could have just told us they believed in Hashem, and therefore, why did it add the word Moshe? And this seems to go against the usual way that we expect the Kalva Homer to work. Zer Shimshon says, the Tirtu Lefi Darkam and the and the and the and the commentators who asked this question on the Al Shimoni, they answered each one according to his own approach. They have their different answers to that question. And in a moment, in the next paragraph, the Zer Shimshon will begin to introduce his own approach and his own answer. But let's pause for a moment to understand a cal- the concept of a Kalva Homer in case uh, not everyone uh, is familiar with it or remembers exactly how it works. It's really a very uh, straightforward, basic uh, kind of log- idea of logic or principle of logic. The word kal means something light or simple. The word chomer means something serious or heavy. And so the idea is that if we are presented with the piece of information, that's something that is chomer, that is hard to believe or difficult to, to accept. If, if we're told that that's true, then certainly we know that anything simpler or easier, lighter than that, has to be true. For example, a simple example, let's imagine a person says, I've been working out and I can now lift 100 pounds over my head. I can lift 100 pounds up over my head and hold it there, right? Okay, that's great. That's great accomplishment. We don't need the person to tell us, I can even do 50 pounds or 25 pounds or 75 pounds. Why don't we need to know that? because all of those weights are less than the 100 pounds that he just told us he can lift. So it would work like this. If he can lift 100 pounds, Kalva Chomer, certainly we know without him saying anything about it, that he could lift any weight less than 100 pounds. He can lift 95, 90, 85, 80, all the way down to one pound. We know for sure he can lift any weight that's less than 100 pounds, which he just told us he can do. So that's how a Kalva Chomer works. And what apparently is happening in the, in the Yalkut Shimoni is that it's saying if the Torah had told us only that the people believed in Moshe, then we would have used the principle of Kalva Homer to say, oh, if they believed in Moshe, who's just a human being, a mere mortal, then certainly they believed in Hashem, who's, uh, who's omnipotent and all powerful and all knowing and who created the universe. That's certainly the people believed in Hashem. So that's the way uh, the Kalva Homer would fit into the Yalkut Shimoni. Uh, but the Zer Shimshon points out that the wording and the phrasing in the Yalkut Shimoni seems to be off a little bit and different than the way we would expect it to be. And that's what he's going to address now. Uladida nire, according to us, the Zer Shimshon says, according to our approach, it would appear. Shehamedrish hir gishkusha acheres. The Yalkut Shimoni actually was grappling with a different problem. It had a different issue, and that's why it phrased, that's why it used a different wording. The the Yalkut Shimoni was bothered by the fact that it isn't relevant at all to tell us that the people believed in Moshe. Why not? Anything that Moshe did, any miraculous act, any sign, any wonder, anything that Moshe did, he did explicitly in the name of Hashem, he did saying, this is what Hashem told me to do. This is what Hashem instructed me to say. And this is what Hashem uh, instructed me to do. And everything he did, he, Moshe would mention the name of Hashem. Moshe wasn't trying to trick anyone, to fool anyone. At no point did Moshe ever make it appear as if he had some kind of independent power, independent authority. Moshe 
was constantly saying, this is what Hashem told me to do. This is my mission from Hashem. This is what Hashem sent me for. Uh, and when Moshe would bring a plague, Moshe would say, to Paro, uh, or with Aaron, Aaron some would, would say, but they would communicate to Paro, this is what God told us to say and to do. And if you don't let the people go, then God's going to strike you and bring a plague in such and such a fashion. Everything was based on Hashem and Hashem's power and Hashem's instructions. And therefore, there should be no reference. There's no reason for the Torah to talk about the people believing in Moshe. Rather, it should just, the Torah should only talk about the people believing in Hashem, who was, of course, the source of everything that was taking place at that time. And this idea about everything coming from Hashem and the people believing in Hashem is written openly in a Pasuk. This is a Pasuk from uh, Parsha Shmos, uh, at the very beginning of the story of Moshe coming back from Midian, after Hashem gives him his marching orders, so to speak, and now Moshe comes back and he meets up with his brother Aharon, and together they come, and before they go see Paro, they talk to B'nai Yisrael, and uh, they tell B'nai Yisrael that Hashem had spoken to Moshe and sent them on this mission to take them out of slavery. So that that's where this Pasuk comes from, and the Pasuk says, ha'am vayishma'u, and the people and the nation believed and they heard, ki fokad Hashem, that Hashem had remembered uh, his people, v'chule, et cetera, vayikdu vayishtachavu, and they got down, they lied down, and they bowed in front of Hashem. So the Zerah Shimshon says it's it's, it's basic. You can see right in that Pusuk from the very beginning, it doesn't say the people bowed to Moshe. It doesn't say the people believed in Moshe. The people heard Moshe's story his, of his mission and his, uh, and his being sent by Hashem, and they believed in Hashem. That's what the Pusuk tells us. V'kan al-hayam, and here in our parsha, B'Shalach, by the Kriyas Yamsuf, Omar Moshe, Moshe himself says, his yatsvu uru, he tells the people, stand and, and, and see, as Yeshua's Hashem, the salvation of Hashem, asher yase lochem hayom, that he will do for you today. So again, Moshe didn't say, look what I'm about to do. Look how I'm going to stretch out my arm and split the sea. Moshe said, stand and watch what Hashem does to, to save you today from the Egyptian army that was pursuing them. So it's very clear that the, everything was coming from Hashem. Moshe went out of his way at every opportunity to make it clear that everything was coming from Hashem. So the Zerah Shimshon says that's what really bothered the Yalkut Shimoni as to why at all any Pusuk anywhere would say the people believed and trusted in Moshe. That doesn't make sense to the Yalkut Shimoni, and that's what was bothering it. And even if you want to come and say that the people, of course, believed in Hashem, that he was the one to bring the miracles. But they also believed in Moshe, that he was worthy to have the miracles done through him, that Hashem had chosen Moshe and decided Moshe would be the one, the human representative, so to speak, uh, who uh, intermediary uh, who would have intermediary who would have the miracles done through him. Maybe the Zerah Shimshon says, if you want to, if you point, if you want to argue back and say, if you want to answer and say, no, it's not that they believed Moshe was doing the miracles. Of course, they believed Hashem was doing the miracles, but they understood and they accepted and trusted in Moshe that he was the uh, person who Hashem had selected to have the miracles done uh, through him. That's what you say, I die in kasha. Then we still have a problem. Ma Talmud Lomar B'Moshe, why is the Torah mentioning at this point that they believed in Moshe? It makes sense to mention here at the Kriyas Yamsuf, at the story of the splitting of the sea, it makes sense to mention that they believed in Hashem. Shaykh Shapir Hacha. It is very relevant here to the story of the Kriyas Yamsuf, of B'nai Yisrael's, uh, 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 the, the climax of the story of B'nai Yisrael being able to leave and escape uh, from, uh, from slavery. Shahare b'zchus ha'emunah nig'olu mi 
because it was in the merit of their belief in Hashem that they were, the Bnei Yisrael was redeemed from and, and rescued from Egypt. Kemosha Amru Razal, as Chazal say, uh, in that, in, and that's also, by the way, uh, this reference here in the, in the Zerah Shimshon is a reference to the same piece and the Yalkut Shimoni that he quoted before. Aval Masha Heminu Lemoshe, but the fact that the people trusted in Moshe, Lo Shayach Klal Hacha, it has no relevance here. Le Geulasim Shel Yisrael to the redemption of the Jewish people from Mitzrayim. No, in no place does it, does the Torah seem to say or indicate that because the people trusted in Moshe, that's why they were redeemed. So the Zera Shimshon is saying that the real problems, it's actually a twofold problem, that the Medrash Yalkut Shimoni was dealing with and thinking about and coming to answer in this little piece that we opened with, was the fact that the A, part A, that the Torah mentioned the people believing in Moshe at all, which the Zer Shimshon showed us, doesn't really make sense from a certain perspective because everything came from Hashem. So just talk about the people believing in Hashem. It doesn't, there's no reason uh, to talk about it. It doesn't even make sense to talk about the people believing in Moshe. And number two, even if you want to argue and frame it as if to say, oh, the Torah is teaching us that they accepted Moshe as the one who Hashem picked to have the miracles done through him, even if you phrase it that way, it's not relevant here. Okay, it might make sense. It might, it might be a, a, a reasonable point for the Torah to make, but why here? When here we're talking about how did B'nai Yisrael merit escaping from Egypt and being able to, to deserve, to have the schus for, for the Egyptian army to be wiped out now and, and drowned in the sea, and for them the, to be able to, to uh, now complete their escape from Mitzrayim, all we should talk about and focus on, the Zer Shimshon says, is their trust in Hashem, because Chazal tell us that was what gave them the merit to be rescued in this way, not the fact that they trusted in Moshe, apparently, seemingly, it has nothing to do with their trust in Moshe. So that, the Zer Shimshon teaches us, is what was bothering the Yalkut Shimon. Now let's continue. The tirades, and so the Yalkut Shimoni was coming to answer that two-part question. That the Torah was talking about the people's belief and trust in Moshe to teach us for all future generations. Everyone who believes in the leaders of Klal Yisrael. So the way that people believed in Moshe in that time and the way people uh, have emunas chachomim in for the leaders of the Jewish people in times since then until today. Af masha omrim bishmam. And they accept even what these leaders say in their own names. Velo b'shem hakodesh baruchu. Not only what they quote in the name of Hashem, meaning when Moshe spoke to the people, of course, many, many times, he was talking and quoting directly from Hashem. But Moshe also spoke to B'nai Yisrael when he was not quoting from Hashem, and they accepted his words, and they believed him, uh, and had trust and faith in him. Mikre ke'ilu ha'aminu b'hakadosh baruchu. And that Torah is referring to that trust and belief in Moshe as if they had as a demonstration of their belief in Hashem. And from this positive statement, you can also learn out the reverse, the negative part of this statement, or the corollary, negative corollary. Someone who does not believe and does not accept uh, the words of the leaders of the Jewish people, it's as if that person does not believe in Hashem. So a person who says, I totally believe in Hashem, but I don't believe in Chazal, I don't accept the things uh, Chas Hashem and Chazal are teaching, uh, teaching us and saying to us, that person, the Yalkut Shimoni is saying, it's as if that person doesn't really have complete amun in Hashem. She'afkan shel Yisrael nase lohem hanes b'schus ha'amunah, here in our parsha of Bishalach and the story of the Kriyas Yamsuf, the, the merit that the Jewish people had to be rescued in this way came through their emuna, their faith. If they didn't have also, in addition to their faith and trust in Hashem, a faith and trust in Moshe, even in those areas where he wasn't directly quoting what Hashem told him, Lo the miracle would not have happened for them. And 
And that's why the Pasuk, this is what the Yalkut Shimoni is teaching us according to the Zer Shimshon. The Pasuk is telling us Vayaminu Bahashem Uvamosha Avdo to tell us the uh, B'nai Yisrael only merited the Nais of the, the Nisim involved with Kriyas Yamsu because they trusted and believed in Hashem and they trusted and believed in Moshe. And so too for all future generations, the Yalkut Shimoni is teaching us to have trust and belief in Chazal and the Roe Yisrael, the leaders uh, who shepherd and guide and, 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 uh, and uh, protect uh, Kla Yisrael and, uh, and to have Emuna and trust in them as well. And that is a schus, a great schus and a source of great merit for B'nai Yisrael. Yashukoch to everyone who participated in the learning of Zer Shimshon this week, and we look forward to God willing learning uh, together again and the Zer Shimshon on next week's Parsha.